a comment from my video. I give this Sarah Squad shout out at the end to one of my subscribers who leaves a comment on my video. It's a new thing. Uh -huh. that I I know it's a leap that I I will I be a part of Sarah Squad now. You're comfortable, na Sakshi. <laughs> if two, Sakshi, any two bodies, when Sakshi, I'm Sakshi, I can show you. Hmm. Mute, okay? Okay. Sorry, good time out. Okay, I just can't deal with it. Have you heard what? anything? You don't know Jeffrey Star? He's a makeup. Jeffrey. Star? Jeffrey Star is a makeup. Jeffrey Star is a makeup. Uh, ियो to learning more about the lgbtqia plus community and also having more fun with pride makeup and colorful makeup so if this is your first video you're watching on my channel then please don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the bell icon right next to it so that you're notified every time i upload a video we are genuinely sensitized about the topic of lgbtqia plus but we really don't know and have much insight into the community and when i say we i also mean myself because i have been very open about the acceptance of the community but never really educated myself on the topic so for that reason i have a very special guest here with us today she's an occupational therapist she was also my senior in college and she's a certified personal counselor and she specializes in talking about sexuality and mental health and runs a very dedicated platform on instagram called sex love and ot so you are present to you dr sakshi tiko hi sakshi how do you feel to be here on my channel for the very first time It's excellent. I th I think I'm so delighted to be be a part of this channel because I know you have been here for such a long time. So I'm really really happy to finally be a part of this huge club. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you here finally and I'm so excited that everybody gets the information from the right source rather than me just bra blabbering 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 about something I don't even know about properly so I have a bunch of questions here for you which we have gathered from you folks and we took the poll on Instagram as uh, on both of our Instagram pages as well as on my community tab here on YouTube and there was a really good response uh, so let's dive into the questions are you ready yes So I'm going to be like your talk show host and ask you a bunch of questions. So let's start. <laughs> yes, let's get into it. The first question uh, I have is what does each alphabet in the term LGBTQIA+ stand for and represent? Okay, so uh in general uh so L is basically lesbian, uh G is gay, uh B is bisexual. uh what is lgbt is transsexuals uh or trans persons then i is um uh sorry q is queer and the people who are questioning they are still figuring out their sexuality i is intersex uh a is asexual and then plus includes this uh umbrella term of uh, sexual attraction and uh and romantic attraction uh, about romantic attraction so you might have heard the word pansexual you might have heard the word uh, aromantic gray sexual so basically all of these include uh, all the other types of sexuality or you know the other ways in which one wishes to express their sexuality so then apart from that i've also heard the term binary so where does that fall because i always thought that b was for binary and not bisexual So, what does bi binary basically mean? So, okay, so binary is basically what we see right now is heterosexuality. Heterosexuality is basically a person identifying as straight. Basically, a guy likes a girl, girl likes a guy. So that is what binary means. Uh, so non-binary includes uh people who do not uh want themselves to be categorizing themselves as a man or a woman. and uh, they do not even identify themselves in the category of transsexuals so when i speak of transsexuals it is uh, say i am a woman 
but I want to be identified as a man so I would be a trans uh, man okay so that is how it would be so when we speak of non-binary we are saying somebody who does not like the title of uh, or does not rather identifies as a man or a woman but are gender neutral and their sexuality or their identity for their own body keeps on changing and uh, yeah does not fix into the societal roles of how a man or a woman should be all right okay so uh, have you ever heard about jeffree star like have you seen jeffree star uh, how will I, uh, okay, I think my audience knows who's Jeffree Star and I think he's a non-binary because he like every time I see his videos like he dresses up as a female and he of course is into makeup and everything but is of course was a male gender but he does not identify himself as any particular gender like there was this video which he did with Shane Dawson so there was this conspiracy theories and where he uh, where Shane even asked him that what do I call you, do I call you a her or like which pronoun should I use for you and he just said it doesn't matter so does that come under non-binary that he does not want to identify himself as anything? Not really, I think sometimes uh, there are also women who do not wish to use the pronouns she, her or hers so I think pronouns is something again a choice which is completely different from how you wish to identify yourself so this is my choice a choice that I've made that I am cisgender cisgender basically means that the birth that or the sex that was assigned to me at birth is in congruence with how I feel right now about my body I, I like the way I am I feel like a woman and I was born like that so and it is my wish I can someday go ahead. There are still so many uh, cisgender women who who wish to have different pronouns like they and them. So it's completely their choice. And when and for some people, they really do not care. You can call them. You can use whichever pronouns you want for them. So it's 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 not interdependent. It's not interrelated. Alright, okay. Alright, so that was like a brief about the subject and now that we are introduced to the topic, the second question I have here for you is where did the Pride Month origin from? For Indians, I think if I really have to celebrate the Pride Month, I would rather do it in September when Section 377 was abolished for us uh, and it did not decriminalize homosexuality. Uh, but the origins of Pride Month and we are celebrating Pride Month, it's a Western concept. So there was a Stonewall in bar in New York City which was raided somewhere in 1969 as far as I remember in the month of June. And that is what led to these riots and that is what we know, know today as the Stonewall Uprising because that is when this gay bar was raided because of police brutality. Uh, there were a lot of um, LGBTQ protesters, activists and other advocates who supported for the cause. Uh, uh, that actually was a very remarkable uh, event, what say, turn or an event that established um, or you know uh, sort of actually made laws and policies and legal and was the beginning of legalizing LGBTQs in the community. So this is it, that is exactly why June is celebrated as a Pride Month because that is where it all started with the Stone Wallet. All right, so that was something very interesting. I really didn't know about this before. Uh, so let's dive into the third question. And uh, the third question I have for you is how to identify yourself under the community if you're confused about your sexuality. Um, don't. I think uh, because um, I truly truly believe that sexuality is fluid now you might have heard the term fluid now fluid is the same what it means either baby other baby so you can be anything you want you do not really have to identify yourself uh, first from a personal experience I know that I it took me a lot of time to identify myself as a bisexual because I did not have the kind of sex head. I think nobody in the country has that kind of a sex head which they deserve to have. But um, with the kind of knowledge and understanding my own attraction and sexuality, I defined it for myself. So this is how sexuality is. You do not have to label yourself. You do not have to identify yourself. If you think this is the kind of person you are attracted to, go for it. Alright, so uh, there was also another question that asked that if uh, 
Now, if you're no, if you're confused about your sexuality, then how do you decide uh, whom to date? Like, how do you go ahead with the dating culture? Uh, because if you're so confused, like people are really confused. They don't know whom to date. There's a lot of insecurity that uh, is generated because of that confusion. So, how do you go about with the dating culture? So, usually when um, okay, so I have I have not uh, gone in in the depths of Tinder and Bumble because it wasn't cool then. it is really cool now so our idea of dating was to hang out with a bunch of friends and these friends will bring more friends and we'll have like mutual 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 friends and i think that is the whole, that that was the whole idea so i don't know meet people that is uh, that is what my idea of dating has to be meet as many people as you can uh, don't restrict it to your social world and definitely do not label yourself because you struggle so much when you're trying to label yourself in a digital or a virtual world and you have so many limited options because you are focusing on looks you uh, are trying to swipe right and left on these things and you know i think facebook and instagram used to be these platforms where you could meet people who would be really genuine who really wanted to know you So I think just go ahead, talk to as many people as you can. Uh, understand their experiences as well. You know, uh, get to know how, what kind of people have they dated, how have they how have they dated them. You know, things like that. So just meet as many people as you can, and maybe that will help you understand how their experiences have been. And will this person be the kind of person you will feel an attraction to? And I know if if you do, you you get those butterflies <laughs> in your tummy i think i think that still happens i i still believe that the butterfly thing still happens so yeah i've never experienced it myself so i cannot believe really it <laughs> <laughs> okay so the next question says is there a certain age that you're supposed to like identify and uh, realize your sexuality or does it necessarily have to be at puberty i think you get in more think with your sexuality during puberty because before that um there's something that we call in medical terms where you have different ways of uh, receiving satisfaction basically there are different ways of receiving pleasure now as in when you grow your uh, adult hormones basically the ones that give you that kind of an energy or a drive which gives you that kind i think most of our parents would have used the word infatuation where we are like you know this is not really love but this is just happening because of some something else that chemical locha so i think that is still there <laughs> that chemical locha is still there but um, that is when i think you are getting more in sync with your own sexuality because you start giving into this chemical locha you try and understand what is happening what is this new feeling that you are exper- experiencing for some other person which is which is different from you know just having fun or just playing but you are trying to explore this new emotion of love care compassion uh intimacy i think i think that's that's so i think puberty is the time when people actually decide or you know they understand what's happening to their body and maybe usually they it helps them to set preferences during that time it's not necessary if somebody did not uh, identify themselves correctly at puberty that they cannot change later like you said it's fluid right so your preferences might change later on as well yes yes like i am giving you my example i am telling you that i ad- identified as straight but it's only 3 or 2 years back that i started understanding what my sexuality really is and i now identify as a bisexual so that's completely fine that's completely fine so the next question here i have for you is that is meme culture responsible for the way we look at lgbtq community like we so many times we heard somebody say that stop being so gay like is that responsible for the way uh especially indians and other people are looking at the lgbtq community so differently yes a huge yes um so um i just give you an example that i i, I like a post that i come came across the other day where uh they were uh, they were abusing karan johar because of the current events because of how what happened with sushant singh rajput uh may he rest in peace uh but um they abused him which is fine which is okay by me for nepotism and everything else which does not really bother me but they also called him hijra that is something that was very derogatory i think if somebody has to abuse me would they say aurat kahi ki so that 
it's just how he identifies and that is the way he wants to be seen i don't think it needs to be used as a way to insult somebody right so somebody's identity is not up there to insult plus it puts puts everything in such a bad picture imagine i am a teen and i am looking across these memes and i am seeing somebody get teased or bullied because she is a lesbian or they is a lesbian and somebody is being called hijra and maybe it's a derogatory thing and that is the reason why i will or could be one of the reasons why i still feel shameful about exploring the side of my sexuality so it just creates such a negative impact the word in itself is used in such a negative connotation that uh even if somebody wants to explore this they this whole meme culture has already destroyed it for them and painted a different picture for them that's probably why they have that fear and that insecurity to come out of the closet even when they are very sure about uh, their own sexuality they hide it for so many years because of the way we have always used those terms and the way we've always treated that community Okay, so the next question I have for you is: It true that gays are more uh, prone to HIV or AIDS than straight men? That's something even I have uh, heard a lot. So, is that true? Ah, uh, it is. So, when you say men, I am assuming people who have ah uh, who people who are born with penises. So that is what I'm taking the general notion of men for men. and yes they are much more susceptible to hiv and aids because you are uh, the only penetrative form of activity that they would be doing is uh, would be through their anus which has much much more germs as compared to when you look at just penis and a vagina so the amount of catching an infection from the residues or because of the secretions around the anus are much much more and secondly the fact that uh, they are uh, in india especially i think that is the situation that there is a lot of discrimination in the way uh, a person can go and approach to a urologist or somebody or a sexologist for these concerns which is also why it goes undetected for such a long time and protective barriers like condom and these things are not it's very rarely used by indians so um yeah because of that because of these two three reasons yes they are much more susceptible to rather than straight couples they are more susceptible to having hiv and i think because they are also so insecure they don't really go out there and seek uh, help in the more professional way from a sexologist or somebody and that's why they are not like guided properly especially when it comes to sexual health and protection and all of that in india they are very conservative about all of this So, do you think using a condom would really help uh, protect them? Just is that enough protection uh, for the gay men? Definitely, definitely, because uh, uh, condoms are only ninety-eight or ninety-seven percent effective for preventing childbirth for pregnancies, but condoms are the ninety-nine point nine percent the only effective barrier that can be used to uh, prevent any infections and not just HIV and AIDS, but anything else. It could be a rash, warts, uh, any other lesions, infections can be prevented by using condom. So that's great. Then that's very easily available as well to everyone. Okay. So the next question I have is: uh, How does a person who's been in the closet for many years come out to the world? Like, how do they face criticism and bully and self-acceptance mainly? I think more um, the idea of society itself is so overrated, right? I mean, if they do not accept us, our worth is nothing. So our self-worth is associated with the society, which in itself is a very um, is the kind of upbringing I think. Uh, we have all been trying to fight you know when when we wait for everybody to accept us and we have to wait for that and i do not know why uh and the whole idea of coming out of closet in itself is such a huge i do not know why is it such a thing i mean i think it's because of our judgmental our society in general is like not just about this community but that right now i feel like everybody is become so opinionated about everything and they feel like you have to impose your like it's good to be opinionated good to have your opinions but not to impose them on someone and because of our judgmental we are or uh, such communities always feel more insecure about their identity in such a judgmental world these days true definitely and 
the whole idea of coming out of closet itself is overrated that is what i'm saying i mean why do they care why does everybody have to know what do you identify as until and unless that's your choice i mean nobody yeah. should really be bothered by what you are or what your choices are in life and it shouldn't be a big thing like i know i would like my parents to know they know and they do not really care about it anymore because i don't think they want to accept that fact so does that mean they do not love me anymore and they are not proud of the things that i do absolutely not you do not have to keep forcing these things down anybody's throat if you know that this is how you want to how you wish to identify and just stay true to yourself that is it and as far as bullying and everything else goes like i said it is not illegal anymore so report it there are so many organizations yeah. right now who are working towards this and do not think it in this way that i you i do not want to go drag into the court and things like that no you could actually be saving your lives and so many others when you actually report these crimes that's really good to know that's something very well put uh i would say and uh, yeah if you have any more organizations or names of organizations then we'll leave them in the description section so anybody who wants to reach out to them can feel free to check the description section and reach out to those organizations and like you said like with parents i think uh they are all from a different generation they all come from a different generation they are set in their ways and uh, suddenly when you tell them that everything you believed in for 40 50 years of your life is wrong and this is what the right side of the world is it's going to be difficult for them to like banish everything and accept it so i think the fact that they're just listening to us and uh, not abandoning the topic altogether is is fine for now you don't have to force them to accept it uh that's personally what i think De- definitely that's absolutely beautifully put basically <laughs> okay so let's take the last question uh why should so oh, okay somebody actually dared to ask why should we care about their sexuality if it's against the law of nature <laughs> why did you use the word day <laughs> yeah somebody actually dared to ask that i but yeah if this is something people actually feel that being gay or being a lesbian or being from a different like being attracted to the same gender is against the law of nature it's against the books of god and that is something that indians strongly believe in so what do you have to say about that don't <laughs> i mean don't give a don't give a shit about anybody's personality it's none of your business right so if if that is what you're trying to aim at good don't if you do not believe in in the whole concept of lgbtqi plus or pride or anything of that sort don't but when you don't believe in these things uh do not try to go ahead and shame and you know talk all kinds of bs about these things you know that it does not give you that kind of right to do these things when when i say i do not believe in certain things that is i have my own set of reasons but i i do not go ahead and say that oh this is all crap you should not be doing this It's like an atheist telling a religious person that stop believing in god it's utter bullshit like you know trying to push your ideologies down somebody else's throat so it's like believe in what you believe in but don't push it down everybody else's throat so that's right definitely definitely at the, at the end of the day just remember if somebody who does not believe in the idea of pride community uh it's okay completely fine but remember and this is actually for everybody else who, who would be act- watching this episode or uh, you know who is on your channel who thinks that this is not the right thing and against the law of nature completely fine but remember that does not give you the right to insult bully or say anything bad about this person or criticize their choices it's their choice they'll deal with it and they are dealing with it right just be kind just be human be compassionate that that is all that is do not care if you do not care make sure you are not caring when you criticize when you bully these people when you assault them abuse them say bad things about these people you are actually giving a lot of care and you are you, you are thinking or giving in too much so when you decided you do not want to stay away from it so i think the basic logic is that be human before you identify yourself as any sex or any sex uh, choose a sexuality choose to be human uh, so that's very important uh, so yeah this was a very insightful 
very very uh, serious but also very insightful conversation <laughs> so like i i did not know so much about what you spoke so i'm so so glad i could do this video with you uh, how do you feel finally getting all this information i hope it reaches out to a lot of people <laughs> but how how does it feel <laughs> I waited for this so long. <laughs> I never knew when I'd be on YouTube. So, <laughs> yay! <laughs> okay, so I think that's a wrap for this video. The only thing I want to say is just please go ahead subscribe to her channel because I know she is an amazing person and she made me look like a princess on my uh, farewell day. So, um, and that to under ten minutes. So whatever she does is so real and. She may be very brutal with reviews and everything else, but trust me, she is going to put the right product your way. <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys. If you have stayed till the end of this video, then don't forget to share this video with as many people as you all know, so that we can educate and reach out to more people. I hope everyone enjoyed and like gained a lot of information. This was the correct sort of knowledge and information you need on this subject. So thank you so much, Sakshi, for coming on here and educating my audience. Thank you. I love you for doing this for me. And if you are looking to seek personal therapy sessions or personal counseling or teletherapy, then you should contact her on her Instagram page. I'm going to leave the handle right here on her face below her face, and also all the contact details in the description section. So don't forget to check that out like this video don't forget to hit the like button uh, for today's video the sara squad shout out goes to ashwini joshi desai thank you so much ashwini for watching and supporting my channel if you want to be a part of the next videos sara squad shout out then don't forget to hit the subscribe button the bell icon right next to it and leave a comment down below saying hashtag sara squad and you'll get a chance to be a part of next week's shout out bye take care love you stay safe mm -hmm.